Okay, so the next thing we need to make sure that we can do are some of the other things that we could do previously with degrees. We need to make sure that we can now do these with radians as well. So some of those things might include stuff like graph sketching. So normally, when you would sketch graphs of sine and cos, we would be most interested in the 90, 180, 270, and 360 degrees, wouldn't we? Those would be the key bits that we would be interested in. Now, though, you can sketch these same graphs, but instead of using degrees along the axis on the bottom for the x-axis, you can instead use pi over 2 for where it goes up to 1, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And obviously, that's going to keep going as well. So they have an exercise for this in the book that I'm just a bit like, well, it's literally just it's the same as before, apart from the, the axes are now labelled slightly different like this. OK, so we're not going to spend any time on this, um, but just wanted to say you may be expected to do graph sketching and, as you did in year one, and it now may include radians instead. So here's another example of like what the question might be. They've asked us to sketch the graph of y equals the cos of x plus pi over 2 between 0 and 2 pi. Now, normally I wouldn't do this. Normally I wouldn't want you to convert to degrees. But just think to yourself, what does pi over 2 actually mean? 90 degrees. What's it, why is it saying between 0 and 2 pi? What would that normally be saying? between 0 and 360. So now that's the kind of language that we're going to be seeing here. The question doesn't need to tell you we're in radians because it's kind of implying that we're in radians. It's never going to say, now we're working in radians. It's just going to be obvious. What does this kind of transformation mean? What would this transformation be if it's got x plus pi over 2? Translation to the left of pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees. So you can see here. Here is the cos graph. There's the cos graph. And it has shifted 90 degrees, or sorry, not 90 degrees, pi over 2. Everything has shifted pi over 2 along. So it's the same as before, but they've done it in radians. If you do want to think of it in degrees, this kind of thing is kind of OK, because graph sketching is kind of tricky. Everything else we're going to try and do in our head a little bit more. OK. There are also some other things we need to make sure that we can do from the year one content. If you're not so familiar with some of these bits from lockdown, it may be worth having a look over some of the chapter nine stuff. So I want to talk about sine, cosine, and tangents of angles that are now in radians. So do you remember these laws that we went through with um, d during that trig sort of time? We said sine x is the same as what? Does anybody remember what that law is the same as? Sine x is the same as sine of 180 minus x. What was it for cos, though? Anyone remember? Not Sam, because Sam's already done one. Good. It was the cos of 360 minus x. How often did sine and cos repeat? 360. And tan? Tan repeated every 180. So these rules that we've got here committed to memory, because these should be committed to memory. Yes? Isn't another rule um, that cos is meant to be between minus 1 and 180? Yes, there are some additional ones between 1 and minus 1. The reason I haven't written those down here, Chaz, is because they're not going to change when they go into radians, because they will still be between 1 and minus 1. But these rules are now going to change. So sine of x is going to be the same as the sine of pi minus x, OK, because it's <laughs> because 180 is pi. So our other one is now going to be that cos x is the same of cos of 2 pi minus x. So sine and cos repeat every 2 pi, and tan repeats every pi. So it's the same, just with radians. And that same process that you did of solving equations, where you would do 180 minus the answer, you can do the same thing, but with pi. OK, same processes, just with slightly different numbers. So this is perhaps easier to think about do this converting in degrees. We can do it in degrees and in radians, and we'll compare them and see what, see what happens here. 
You do actually have a calculator, so this is why I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time on this. Um, but it says to find the sine, cos, or tan of a common angle. And when we say a common angle, what kinds of angles do you think I might be talking about if I'm talking about common angles in trigonometry? Throw some angles out for me. 45, 90, 60, 30, 120, ones that are multiples of those. So you can see here, this is going to be a common angle because we've got 4 pi over 3. So you can either do this in radians or you can do it in degrees. I would, let's do it first of all in degrees. What is 4 pi over 3 in degrees? It's, it is 240, yeah. It's the cos of 240. Now I can use these rules. So the cos of 240 is the same as 360 minus 240, which is the cos of 120. And then you might draw your cast diagrams. 120 is going to be over here. So what can you say that it's going to be? Is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? It's negative because it's landing over here. And it's going to be the negative version of cos of 60. And cos 60 is? No. That's a half. So it's negative a half. OK, if this is feeling really unfamiliar, it may be because that stuff you did in chapter nine was a while ago. Also, you do have calculators. So like this is interesting to see like how you can do these things without a calculator, because obviously we want to be as non-calculator as possible. But ultimately, you can type this in a calculator. Now, you might be saying, well, if I type cos of four pi over three, my calculator isn't won't necessarily give me that because you need to be in the correct mode on your calculator. Do you know how to go from degrees mode to radians mode. So to do that, can I just look over your shoulder? You go to shift menu, two for angle unit, and then two for radians. And then you'll notice along the top of your page, there will be a little R that's in a box if you're in radians mode. If you want to go back to degrees mode, there will be a D for degrees along the top of it as well. The top of your page, the top of your screen. OK. So if you type in this, it will give you the answer straight away. So because this is the this is the angle that we're talking about here for the cosine of 120. Do you remember what aspect of the graph relates to cosine? It's He's, no, it's how much it's how much this line has moved to the left or the right. And this has moved to the left, which is negative, which is why it's negative. And it's the same distance along the bottom of cos of 60. It's trick. It's not very easy for me to explain in like a few minutes, but there is I can send you a link to that video that might help. So we're not going to do the long way of doing this one. We're actually just going to practice using our calculators. Can anybody tell me what they got when they did the sine of minus 7 pi over 6? How much? A half. OK, a half. What is 7 pi over 6 as, um, as degrees, do we think? 210. 210. So it's the sine of minus 210. I said we're not going to do it. We're probably going to do it now. What should I do to that 210 if I wanted to make it one I could calculate without a calculator? Not 360 minus. Plus I could do 180 minus it, or I could just add 360 onto it. If I added 360 onto it, I would get the sine of the sine of 150. Then you could draw that diagram. 150 is going to be over here, which is the same as it going up 30. So it's the same as sine of 30, hence it being a half. If that stuff is seeming really, really confusing to you, Please don't worry about it. It's great to have that extra depth of knowledge, but ultimately you do have a calculator for these things, OK? The reason we spent a long time doing this in chapter nine is to give you that deeper understanding. If it's not sat with you very well, it's not a problem. You can look at the videos again, or you can just be like, OK, I'm just going to like focus on some of the other areas as well, OK? So that's what would be for exercise 5A and 5B. Personally, I just think they're, we've, done, we've done all the stuff that's in there, so we're, we're not going to have a look at that bit now. I'm just going to pause this here, okay?